Hi all. Now that we've got Ruby installed, what we should do is have a look at getting some user input and then responding to that user input. So what we'll do is create a new .rb file by making a text file and changing it. So we'll call this one get, change the extension to .rb. Obviously we get asked if that's okay and that's fine. And then we'll edit this using the editor we've used before, which is SkyT. So if we want to ask the user for some input, we have to get a string from them. But in order to prompt them for that input, we need to put a string to the screen. So let's say, what's your name? As an example. When we get the value, we need that value to be permanent. So we need to assign it to a variable. So we'll create a variable called name and it equals the string that the user inputs. Then what we can do is respond and we'll respond again by putting a string to the screen and saying, let's say your name is and whatever they've entered and whatever is now contained in the name variable. So we'll save that down and let's run this to see what it gives us. Now if we double click on the file we do get this command window that's now opened. It's put to the screen what's your name and it's waiting for us to input a value. So pick a name, oops, can't lock on. And when we hit enter though, you'll see what happens. It disappears from the screen. Everything is run fine, but clearly that's not what we want. If we go back to this window that I had open, and I've navigated to the Ruby folder, which is where we are here. We can see dev Ruby. That gets RB is now available to us here, and we can just call it directly. So here it is. What's your name? Put in Dave. And your name is Dave. Okay, so we've put a message to the screen to prompt some user input. We've captured the user input via the get string and assigned it to the variable of name. And then we've put a string back, which is a combination of the two. Great, straightforward. Let's just clear this. Now puts isn't the only way to output some text to the screen. We also have another option, which is print. And if we just copy this line directly down here to see what happens, we very quickly run this. We'll see that it looks exactly the same, but we've got a problem here. This period has ended up on a new line. So what's happening there? Is it puts or print? Well, let's see. Let's just copy these lines down to see how they behave together. We run it again and something different is happening now we've got your name is Andrew new line period your name is Andrew new line period so that seems pretty consistent but this one cuts to the new period but really it seems to be running on there's something happening here isn't there and in fact what's happening is that gets is adding a new line if over here we switch to IRB if we just put gets and type in anything, let's put the name Andrew, what we're actually getting is Andrew slash new line. So this is what is going on here and there's a way around this and that's to, let's just exit from IRB, clear the screen, that's to exit, sorry, to remove the new line by using the word chomp on the end. And let's see the effect of that then. So we'll use the same name just for a control. And now we see a different effect. Your name is Andrew. Okay, so puts is putting a new line. And your name is Andrew. No break, your name is Andrew. So we can see that puts 
includes a new line, print doesn't. But things can look confused if we don't take it off gets, which also puts a new line. The reason I'm going over this is obviously you can spend hours just messing around with the formatting of something and knowing that these things are there is obviously going to be useful. If we wanted to break up what print was doing to look more like puts, it is possible to add a new line in ourselves. And if we look at the way that comes up, we can see it now looks the same. So the presence of these characters is there by default in certain ways, but we can also include them should we wish to break the text up. Now we've used this convention of adding whatever the variable is, in this case we keep using Andrew, but there is a slightly tidier way as well, and that's to include this construct. And whatever we put in here, in this case name, will also be shown. Well, it will be shown the same as doing all of this. So it allows us to create much neater strings. So let's change those two and see if there's any difference. Oops, I won't clear the screen. And you can see it looks exactly the same. But it's a nice neat way of including a text and again Ruby is uh, good for being able to write the code in a way that just reads well. Your name is name. But you could put your name is username or something uh, to make it clearer. Another example of how we can work with user input is that we can call a capitalized method. When you see this convention here of dot and then something, in this case chomp, this is calling a method from something, from a particular class that's available by default in Ruby. And we have another method here called dot capitalize. And let's see what the effect of that is. So this time we'll put a lowercase a and see what happens. As you can see in this case, it's been capitalized but in the others it's taken the string exactly as we entered it. I quickly tidied up what we've been writing so we can see just how much is actually going on here even though it looks pretty simple. We can see here we've got this puts and gets and then we've also got the idea of printing out to the screen as well. We've got a variable declaration and then assignment of a value to it, then the use of that variable, and then calling, in this case, the capitalized method on that variable. And obviously we're calling the chomp method on gets here. But obviously all of this puts, gets, chomp, print, capitalize, this is coming from Ruby. We've put name in there, and Ruby knows how to handle variables, and obviously knows what to do when we put these keywords in but what about all of these well you can go and look at the Ruby docs and look at the objects and the classes and the methods that we can call on those so here we are we've got, we're looking at string object it tells us a little bit of what this can do and if we look down here we'll see for example here is the capitalized method so on our string we called the capitalized method so name variable holds a string that the user inputs. Great, okay, so we've got this string and we can call the capitalize method on our string. There's also another one which is down case and in fact if we were to put dot down case we could do a combination of things. We could have the capital A maybe coming in as the name and that would be down case. The whole thing could be down case etc. So we've got chomp and capitalize that we've used, the methods, we've got a down case method we could use. And just looking through some of these, playing with them will give you an idea of, of what else is available. If you click on any of these, let's have a look at chomp, for example, it'll give us some examples here of what what does this actually do? What's the outcome of running this chomp? In fact, here's an interesting one. If you want to parse a particular string. 
The other one is the IO class, the input output class. And it says here it's the basis for all input and output in Ruby. Okay, so we should expect to find some of the things we've been using here. So we were getting input, and here it is, get string. Here is printing, here is put the string. So they're the methods that we called, and they come from this IO here. So again, if we look back at what we've got here, we're saying, okay, so print and puts and gets, get some input, make some output. And that's where those are coming from. Okay, so that's the basics of getting some user input and manipulating it.